The presence of male prostitutes in the purpose-built brothel of Pompeii has not received as much scholarly attention as female prostitutes. This could be due to the difficulty in identifying male prostitutes in the brothel's graffiti or a historical bias towards focusing on female prostitutes in ancient literary sources. Antonio Verone has conducted a comprehensive examination, suggesting that a few male prostitutes worked in the brothel, serving both male and, more controversially, female clients. However, the evidence for female clients remains uncertain. Similar to female prostitutes, male prostitutes faced exploitation and social marginalization. In the place Pseudolus by Plautus, a young male prostitute, who is a slave of the pimp, fears painful encounters with clients and the anger of his master. Male prostitutes had few legal and social privileges, especially if they were slaves. The brothel provides valuable insights into the lives and experiences of male prostitutes. Like their female counterparts, their primary role was to perform sexual labor for paying clients, although they could also engage in other tasks like fetching water or offering shaves. One key difference was that male prostitutes aged out of attractiveness as they reached adulthood, but they could prolong their appeal through daily shaving with a specific razor found in the brothel. Male prostitutes were often reduced to nameless sexual objects in clients' posts, and this lack of individuality was reflected in the brothel's erotic frescoes. Despite this objectification, evidence suggests that male prostitutes engaged in complex performances of their identities and forged emotional connections with clients, possibly out of obligation or hope for better conditions. Unlike female prostitutes, male prostitutes had the ability to physically penetrate male clients, giving them a means to exert control or threaten these clients if necessary. The brothel's material evidence sheds light on the multifaceted lives of male prostitutes and provides a glimpse into their interactions with clients and the challenges they faced in ancient Pompeii. Both ancient Greek and Roman societies considered male beauty to be at its peak during adolescence. However, this beauty was fleeting, and as males transitioned into adulthood, their desirability as sexual objects or partners quickly diminished. Literary representations from that time reveal the anxiety expressed by lovers or masters of these youths about the loss of their sexual partners. Some male slaves even sought to hasten their aging out to escape unwanted attention from their masters. Roman authors like Seneca the Younger described methods to keep males looking youthful past their prime. These measures included dressing young male slaves in women's clothing, removing their body hair, or keeping their legs smooth with pumice stones. Other extreme methods involved shaving beards, applying poultices to delay puberty, and even resorting to castration to ensure a form of permanent youthfulness. For male prostitutes in the brothel, the presence of a razor held particular significance. On one hand, it allowed them to extend their attractiveness by shaving their facial hair daily. On the other hand, it served as a constant reminder of the fragility of their beauty and livelihood. The daily ritual of grooming and the emphasis on physical appearance may have even led to the feminization of male prostitutes, as Roman society associated caring for one's appearance with femininity. Male prostitutes in the brothel must have been keenly aware that their attractiveness and ability to attract paying clients were at risk once they needed to use a razor. This situation made them more vulnerable and precarious compared to the brothel's female prostitutes. While the female prostitutes' desirability was more stable over time, the male prostitutes faced an uncertain future as they aged out of their youthful appearance. This vulnerability added to the challenges they already faced in their profession and daily lives. In the brothel of Pompeii, male prostitutes played a significant but often overlooked role as sexual objects for clients. While there are not many specific graffiti mentioning male prostitutes, Roman sexual vocabulary and norms about masculinity suggest that male prostitutes could have been the implied objects of many sexual boasts written on the walls. Some graffiti directly evoke male prostitutes as sexual partners. For instance, one graffito proudly proclaims, Placidus fucks here who he wished, using a relative pronoun referring to males or mixed groups. Similar uses of masculine pronouns can be found in other graffiti. However, unlike female prostitutes who are sometimes mentioned by name in the boasts, male prostitutes remained anonymous, serving as nameless sexual objects in clients' writings. Male prostitutes were likely involved in sexual acts mentioned in certain graffiti, such as anal penetration. The boast I want to ask fuck suggests a possible engagement with male prostitutes, and other graffiti mentioning irrumation could also imply sexual activity with male partners. Despite their presence, male prostitutes were nearly invisible in the brothel's graffiti and frescoes. The lack of specific representation of male-male sexual relationships in the frescoes reinforced their marginalization and vulnerability. Instead, the frescoes mainly depicted male-female pairs, leaving male prostitutes without representation in the brothel's decorative scheme. This invisibility of male prostitutes in both graffiti and frescoes contributed to their social and legal marginalization, reinforcing the notion that they were secondary and less visible compared to female prostitutes. Their absence from the visual narrative perpetuated their conflation with female prostitutes, further obscuring their distinct experiences and identities in the context of the brothel.